Dr. R. R. Sonde serves as an Executive Vice President of Research, Technology and Innovation at Thermax Limited and served as its Executive Vice President of Technology and Innovation since 2007. Dr. Sonde has been a member of the Executive Council at Thermax Limited and he has served as an Executive Director of Energy Tech of NTPC Limited. Dr. Sonde holds a PhD from IIT Mumbai. Dr. Sonde, uh, could you tell us a little bit about Thermax's specific contributions to the Scope Big project? The project that we are building under the Scope Big is perhaps the highest efficient uh, solar project at a three megawatt scale, uh, matching probably the best uh, of the even a conventional large scale thermal power plant, Arushi. And one more beautiful thing about this concept is that we have kind of put a biomass and solar in a 50-50 format. Maybe right now it may be 40, 60 or something or so on. So depending upon the availability in, 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 in uh, Rajasthan, in uh, Gujarat, where there's a ample solar available, you can have the ratio uh, tilted in the form of 60% uh, uh, solar and maybe 40% uh, biomass. Um, what kinds of social development impacts do you foresee emerging from this project? Oh, I think, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the whole concept of this particular uh, project is uh, to develop this uh, distributed scale uh, power plant, uh, which we feel uh, will have a very, very immense uh, positive impact on the society because as we move, move forward, uh, when we are going to be transiting from a fossil economy and we realize that the renewable energy is not to be equated uh, or the concept of a renewable energy plants will not be similar to the fossil based power plants. Uh, it is very clear that you'll be generating electricity, you'll be generating a thermal energy, you'll be generating cold energy and if it's required you can generate even the even even the uh, water or the drinking water. Um, now, why should power uh, power generation plant such as this um, be considered as a mo model for further replication in India? So this particular concept of uh, a poly generation or a multi generation using uh, biomass and solar, if you examine. Being an agricultural dominant country, uh, India, we don't have those big forests or a woody biomass that uh, uh, every field, whether it is a field which is delivering the, the, uh, the, the cereals or vegetables or, 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 or rice or, uh, or, or uh, the sugar cane, a lot of them have got this agro residue coming as a, as a biomass. And very often after the biomass is consumed by the livestock, they are all burnt. In fact, you must be seeing the tremendous pollution this burning of this biomass is causing. And if you have seen those re recent NASA pictures uh, coming from Punjab and the entire right ball of the country, you will feel that this energy is wasted because there is no other way that the farmers are able to dispose of this bio biomass residue before the field is made ready for the next crop, uh, next uh, uh, cultivation of the crop. So what we feel is that using that very biomass, and you need to process that biomass, of course, whether it's going to be rice husk or a bagasse or soya residue or the groundnut shells or coconut shells or whatever this biomass residue, once you process it, if you are able to actually use it and supplement it with a with a solar which is also available um, in, in, a, in a tropical country like ours, uh, we feel that such a concept at a scale that we have designed for Scope Big uh, can become a reference plant which can be proliferated uh, in various regions of the country. So the same concept can be kind of tweaked to the different geographies of the country and meet the requirements of the distributed uh, uh, power or distributed energy requirements across the country to this particular concept. Um, now, to enable this to be taken forward, what kind of support do you uh, envisage that the, uh, from the government? Government is a very important player uh, and a stakeholder in ensuring that this concept, such concepts multiply in large scale in the country. <laughs> Why am I saying this? 
let us examine what is the, what is the motive of every government and particularly this government and they have made it very clear that power for all is their one of their basic basic uh, 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 policy requirement and they will do everything to ensure that the power for all is made a reality in next five years time these kind of uh, requirement of um, energy or the power demands in my opinion has to be met by these uh, the, the smaller plants uh, in the range of one to three megawatt and I'm sure that government uh, understands that going forward, if you want to meet this requirement of uh, power for all, will definitely one of the component of that, um, uh, that particular objective can be fully met by these concepts. The main challenge is uh, how do you really create a, a good enterprise model so that this particular power generated from these kind of plants are utilized by the local people and the excess power can be always fed into the grid. So the microgrid concept, it would require a large scale policy initiative and regulatory support coming from the government. There is also requirement of a proper uh, fuel chain, fuel supply chain to be managed uh, through a various local or a panchayat body so that whatever, uh, whatever agro residue which is generated is made available to this plan so that the, uh, so that the villagers is like is going to get his power at a at, at a at a substantial lower cost. In India, component uh, in this particular plant is almost 100 percent, and hence uh, developing a small small manufacturing uh, sectors uh, for building several components, whether it's a solar parabolic trough or whether it's going to be the pressure vessels or whether it's going to be the piping, whether it's going to be various other uh, other components which go into this plant can be manufactured at a local level and thereby it would put a tremendous amount of thrust for creating uh, creating the employment and a huge amount of human skills will get involved in the complete uh, value chain of this particular project for which government has to provide right kind of uh, policy support uh, arushi could you uh, tell us a little <coughs> bit about the environmental um, ramifications of a, a plant such as this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, as the name itself suggests, because it is going to be using two renewable sources. One, of course, a truly renewable carbon negative solar. And another is the biomass, which is again going to be a, a carbon neutral uh, renewable source. And these two renewable sources, uh, which are hybridized, coupled with the highest efficiency would mean that uh, a even the consumption wise in terms of the per uh, kilowatt hour or per unit of electricity that is generated consumption of the biomass is uh, uh, is the lowest it is of the order of uh, let's say 0.4 to 0.5 kgs of biomass per kilowatt hour uh, which would mean even the neutral carbon dioxide which is coming out of this particular plan is minimized and that's a big advantage. So being a, a green plant, a green uh, technology does not depend on any fossil sources, but still having a very high efficiency has got uh, two ramifications. One, as I said, in terms of uh, the CO2 emissions are, uh, are, are, uh, are neutral and are reduced because of the highest efficiency. And because of the highest efficiency also, the land use of this particular plant is uh, compared to any other conventional solar plant, is minimized as you must have seen that for a three megawatt plant in a conventional sense if it requires a certain area for the power for the for the solar thermal will be reduced by almost 20 to 30 percent because of the higher efficiency of the plant and of course because of also being integrated with biomass and number three um, of course it generates the power uh, because of the biomass availability it can run on biomass alone during the non-solar time and therefore the availability and the power generated the energy generated from such plants are going to be very high and that is a that is a another green effect because many times you're talking about a renewable energy you have a very low what you call cuf or a capacity utilization factor whether it's a solar or a or a wind and hence you have to all the time depend on the fossil fuel based plants for balanced energy or you need a huge energy storage requirements Whereas this plant, because of the fact that it has been hybridized with the two renewable sources and they can be run together or they can be run independently, 
gives you that additional benefit of for the power being available, the green power being available for a larger number of hours as compared to other solar alone or a wind alone power plant. This is a fantastic concept, in my opinion, that if you want to define and put the ranking of any green plant, this concept would probably be the highest in terms of all the parameters to qualify for the best green design, uh, Arushi. Wonderful. Dr. Sonde, thank you so much.